Welcome to the part 5 of the tutorial series on reinforcement learning in Godot. In this part, we will write an implementation for rewards and observation of our environments. First, we start with detecting collisions between our agent and the ground. The agent is a rigid body 2D uh, that has several collision shapes that we need to distinguish. To do this, first uh, we add metadata to the shapes. Name field uh, that uh, equals right leg for the right leg shape, left leg and body for similar fields in other shapes. Now, using these meta properties, we obtain shape indexes. We iterate over shape owners and their shape IDs. Then we get the shape using shape owner and shape ID. Then we compare the meta property of the shape to the right leg, left leg and body. If they match, we save the shape IDs uh, to use them later when we will detect collisions. Now let's implement the function integrate forces, where we will be detecting the collisions. And to store whether our legs or body uh, collided, we declare variables uh, left leg collided, right leg collided, and body collided. In the integrate forces function, we first set these variables to false. Then we iterate over the contacts of our rigid body 2D and obtain shape indexes of the local contact shapes. Or oh, something is wrong. Oh, we already have the function integrate forces. Let's copy paste our code there. Now, after fixing small mistake in for loop, we compare the indices of the left leg shape, right leg and body shapes that we got earlier to the shape index of the colliding shape. And then we set appropriate leg, right leg, left leg or body collided variables to true. Now let's go to the node inspector of our agent node and turn the collision monitor on and set the number of contacts to report to 6. Then let's go to the environment scene and add a label to debug our collision detection code. Let's rename it to label observation. In the on timer timeout function, where we usually get our observation, we will add text to the label that we just created. We print our agent left leg collided, right leg collided, and body collided uh, with the new lines in the label. By the way, we have a small bug. We call the function act on the agent scene. In our case, uh, of one agent it does not make any difference, but let's just fix it just in case. We also forgot to convert the variables that we're trying to print to text. Let's do just that by passing them to str function. Now let's test our environment. Now, uh, as we can see in the left upper corner, uh, we successfully detected the collisions of legs and bodies separately. After finishing collision detection of the agent with the ground, let's add vision to the agent using raycasts. We declare several variables, uh, num rays, uh, that is equal to 10 for the number of rays we cast, uh, this length uh, for the length of the line that we'll use to draw the rays, angle increments, the difference between angles of adjacent rays, that will equal to pi over num rays, and also we'll need to erase vision where we store the results of ray casting and vision lines to store line to d nodes for visualization. Now in the ready function we initialize the vision and vision lines arrays. For each ray we uh, append a value of minus one to the vision array that stands for no intersection of the ray with the ground. Then we instance a new line to d node, adds two points uh, initialized to zero vectors and set the line width to 3. Finally, we add instance node as a child and append it to the vision lines array. In the function integrate forces, we obtain a world 2D object for ray casting. Then we get so the global position of the agent using global transform on a zero vector. Then for each ray, we calculate uh, the angle of this ray and computes the target vector at the end of this ray. 
we do it by multiplying the direction of the angle by the division length. Now we obtain the global position of the target points using global transform x form function. Afterwards, we call the function ray intersection of our world 2D object by using the global position of the origin of the ray and the target. We exclude the agent node itself from intersection and also apply the agent collision mask. Now we set division line points uh, to local origin and local target coordinates. If the result of the ray cast uh, is not empty, we set division line endpoint to the local coordinates of the intersection point. We use uh, the inverse transform of the agent to do this. If the collision occurs uh, with the ground object, we set the vision variable to 1 minus distance from the ray origin to the target divided by the vision length. This way, if the ground is close to the agent, uh, the vision will be close to 1. And if it's far, it will approach 0. Now let's print a vision array in our observation label and test the environment. As we can see, our vision works properly. Uh, when the upper half of the array points upwards, the first half of the vision array gives us minus ones. We implemented key parts of the observation that our agent gets. Now let's assemble these parts together in the new function getObservation. It will take uh, the coordinates of the landing area from the environment and return float array of observations. First, we will declare several variables uh, that will be used to scale values to approximately minus one one interval. First, scale x and scale y will be our viewport sizes. Then we set linear velocity vector and the vector pointing towards landing area in the global coordinate system. So, the observation array will consist of direction to the goal, uh, unit vector components, its length scale to average scale x and scale y, then linear velocity unit vector components, then linear velocity magnitude scaled by the average xy scale divided by 10, then cosine and sine of the agent rotation, angular velocity scaled by pi over 10. Now we add 1 if left leg is colliding, otherwise 0. Same thing for the right leg colliding. And in the end of the observation, we append our vision array. And then we return the whole observation. Back in the environment script, in the function on, on timer timeout, we get uh, the agent observation instead of zero array we had previously. We also have to pass ground node area center variable to our get observation function to tell the agent where it has to land. Now let's also output our observation array to the label and test the environment. As we can see, everything seems to work properly. Now it's time to implement the reward for the agent. But before that, we need to detect our agent entering the landing area. In the ground node script, let's add two new signals, landing body entered and landing body exited with an additional parameter body uh, that will pass to the signal. Now, in the C node inspector, we connect the landing area signals, body entered and body exited, to some function in the ground node script. Then we emit signals from this function and pass the argument body to them. In the environment script, we also create two new functions on landing body entered and on landing body exited. Now we need to connect uh, the ground signals to these functions. In the reset function of the environment script, after adding the ground to the child, we will call connect and pass the signal name, target object, which is self, and function name. Afterwards, in the signal functions, we check that the body that entered the landing area is indeed an agent by comparing their instance indices. And we turn a new variable in landing area to true or false upon enter or exit. Yeah, and do not forget to declare this variable. 
Now let's quickly check that it works. We will output the variable in lensing area to our observation variable on the new line. And indeed, when we crash into the landing zone, we get true in the upper left corner. Now let's implement the function called done and reward that will output whether we should terminate the episode and calculate the reward at each step. We'll pass the observation to and delta t to it. First, we initialize the reward to zero and down to false. If the agent is in the landing area, we give it plus 10 reward. If the left leg is touching the ground, which is observation 9, we increase the reward by 25 and terminate the episode. Same with the other leg. If both legs touch the ground, we again increase the reward by 40. Now, if the agent body collides with the ground, we decrease the reward by 100. If the distance between the agent and the landing area is too large, recall that's observation 2, which is distance scaled. We again de decrease the reward by 20 and terminate the episode. Now, we also want to reward our agent by how close it is to the landing area. So we add 1 over 1 plus distance to the reward. We also need to terminate the episode uh, if it takes too long. So we declare the variable elapsed time, we reset it to zero in the reset function, and increment it by delta t each time we compute the reward. If it's greater than some maximum time, we terminate the episode, and we return the reward and down variables. Now let's set the max time of the episode to 10 seconds. In the timer timeout function, uh, we compute done and reward. Uh, do not forget that the tensor write function takes arrays as the arguments. Finally, let's print uh, done and reward arrays to the observation label text and check that environment works. And it does. Now, back in Python script, we have to change the number of observations of our environment. It will be 21 now. And to test, let's reset uh, the episode when done is equals to 1. We read the observation reward done and info and get uh, an item from the tensor done. Now let's print the observation out. So let's export our PCK and run the Python script. As we can see, we get the observation just fine, but the episode does not terminate when the agent's body hits the ground. Turns out we have two mistakes. First, we forgot to turn down equals true when the agent body collides with the ground. Second, we need to convert down variable to integer before we write it to the memory. Now, let's uh, again export our PCK file and launch uh, the Python script. Now, when the agent body hits the ground, the environment is reset and everything works properly. Well, we'll see you in the next part, that will be the last one.